selected a team of battle pets and I'm leveling them. I started, I picked them all at level one. I've been leveling them a little bit, so they're level four, two are level four, one's level five. I'm going to show you those and tell you about them. Okay, so if you look on the screen, um, this is the pet battle, the battle pet interface, and you click on this from the bottom menu option, which is collections, and then it's the pet journal tab. So these are all my pets on the side. I have 548, but some of them are duplicates. Um, not that many. It's over like 400 unique pets. Okay, so then to the right, to the left is your list of all your pets, and there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can organize and sort your pets. So like you can look at the ones you have, the ones you don't have yet with not collected, the pet families. So in WoW, there are the battle pets are humanoid, dragonkin, flying, undead, critter, magic, elemental, beast, aquatic, and mechanical. So there's a lot of different kinds. Um, and then sources, the ways you can get the pets, they can drop. So that means that when you kill something, you'll get a pet. Um, kill something usually like a boss um, or like a rare spawn. Those are the most like common things that drop pets. Uh, quest rewards, those give pets oftentimes. Vendors, you can buy some pets. Um, some are specific to like factions like Quarter Alliance or to different like the different groups like the Blood Elves or the Draenei or whatever. Um, then there's profession pets, and I actually had some for enchanting. I can I made the enchanted lantern, and there's other uh, engineering can make pets. I think probably other people can too. Um, all right, uh, pet battle pets. So that's if you win them in a pet battle. Um, achievements you can get battle pets through achievements. I've gotten a couple through getting achievements for like having a certain amount. Then world events, um, so those are things that go on in the game. There, uh, so World of Warcraft has holidays, you know, there's regular holidays and there's in-game holidays. So there's like a Christmas festival and right now is the Lunar Festival celebrating the Chinese New Year. Um, there's like 4th of July, Thanksgiving, Brewfest, Halloween, Harvest Festival, you know, the fireworks, like a children's week that's coming up, something for Easter. There's a New Year's thing, so they're pretty fun. Um, and I've gotten a fair amount of pets from those. I've also gotten mounts from those as well. Uh, promotions, um, that would be like a special they're having. Um, sometimes you can get something for a release of something. Um, I know we got one of the pets that I have is from when I went to BlizzCon, which is the two-day convention that Blizzard has, and it's for Warcraft and their other games, Starcraft, Diablo, Hearthstone. Um, so that's neat. Uh, there's also the trading card game. I don't play that, but the trading card game, you can get some crazy neat pets and mounts from that. And then the in-game shop, so you can buy some. And I bought one. I bought the Cinder Kitten. I would buy more. I don't know why I don't. I don't. Alright, so those are where you can get them, the kinds, and now the different ways you can sort them. So these, if you uncheck them, it'll, it will, like, won't show you those. Alright, um, so now the way I have everything checked, you can see all of my pets and all the ones I don't have as well. Now for sorting them, you can sort by name, level, rarity, or type. And I have mine sorted by rarity because in WoW there's different qualities for the pets. Um, so the best one is blue, which is rare. Like, and you can tell because the area around the um, there, the area around the name is blue. Um, so there's rare, and then the green is the next one down. It's good quality. Um, then white is average quality and gray is poor quality. There's also uh, purple ones and um, orange ones. Purple and orange ones are epic and legendary 
it's easier to get those for followers. Um, yeah, those are really pretty rare. Not as common, harder to get. So, these are all... Now that I'm And that's Miles, my dog, saying hello. Miles, be quiet. Help me. It's okay. Sorry, Miles. Grumble. Sorry about that. Okay. So now I have my pets sorted by quality, so I want to level the rare ones because they're going to be the most powerful. So starting here on the left, stop grumbling. That's my, these are my level 25s. And, and wow, the battle pets, they can, they, the lowest is one. They don't all start at level one. The highest you can get is level 25. The level the pet is when you get it really just depends on the leveling area. Um, some pets are pretty much only in the higher areas. Some are in all of them. So not all the ones that are 25, I necessarily started at level one. So these are the ones of mine that are epic and already leveled. So I have an okay amount. And then level 23s, 22s, 21s, 20s, 19. So quite a few in the teens now. And some are fun. So I have different kinds of pets. Like there's the cleft hoof front, which is a, a little bull. Um, and so there's a lot of them. I've gotten these for like doing different things. This was a world drop. Um, it's kind of rare. And then I have like an armadillo. That's fun. So what I did for the leveling is I went to the level one rare pets, which I have the most of because for the epic pets that you get for rewards, those are pretty much always level one. I think they are always level one and they're always epic. So I have the most of those because I've gotten so many of these from achievements. Oh, here, Mercablo. This is the one from BlizzCon, the promotion. Um, he has some neat effects. Okay, so then the next thing for the battle pets is their abilities. So how can you tell what it does? Well, okay, using Mercablo. So on this part, of the interface. Here we have the picture of it, um, the level next to the name, the color around the box indicates the quality. Then you have the health bar. So level one is 152 health. This is the power. So the increases the damage. His power is 12. He's a level one, not very strong. This is his speed. So the fastest one goes first. So that's why that matters. Okay. Now the quality is rare. So this is the experience bar that tells you, like right now that's empty because there's no experience. Like down here where I'm leveling them, you can see it's filled in some for them. Okay. But so for this, how much experience you need for each level, it increases as you level. So leveling is always really fast in the beginning and then it gets a little bit slower as you get to higher levels. Um, now, but uh, this will tell you how much, like what percentage, so that can be helpful. And it's visible as a bar, so it's easy to keep track of where you are with your pets. So now, the next thing there is, is right here, there's the picture of what the battle pet looks like, which is always the awesomest part, because they're, they put a lot of thought into these, it seems like, and they're fun. I don't know. It seems like an aspect of the game that the developers have a lot of fun with, and it's a neat part. Okay, so now to the abilities. Each pet has six abilities. They open up at different levels. The first one they automatically get, because you can't have a pet that does nothing. That would be, I mean, not really the best. So you start with one, then at level two you get your second ability, level four your third, then level 10, 15, and 20. So, and then the way it works, um, once you have them, you can, you can go down here and look and see you can only have three abilities that you can use at a time. So for each slot, and there's three slots with two in each slot. So what you have to do is figure out once you have them all, which abilities you want. 
And for that, it depends on a lot of things because what most of the battle pets, one of the spells is some kind of heal. Um, a lot will have like an AoE damage or multi round. Um, so it's something that persists through three to nine rounds. It could be weather, it could be an attack, it could be a heal, some kind of protection. There's a lot of different things. Um, and then the different damage abilities, and some of them are pretty cool looking. Um, like Terra Gosa, the one of the little dragons I'm leveling, breathes fire. It's kind of awesome. And then the Clockwork Gnome builds a turret, so that's cool. And then the Hydraling makes the weather all stormy and stuff. Calls lightning. Yeah, and the Terragosa does an arcane storm. So they all have cool things. Like right now for these, because they're level 4 and 5, I uh, don't have to pick for the abilities, so that's kind of nice. But when you level, you do. Um, so then... The next thing is your battle pet slots. So you can have three battle pets equipped at a time, and that's your team. You, I think you have to have three. Um, and you can switch them out. They can be any combination of levels, characters, abilities, classes. It's whatever you want. You can throw any three together, see if it works. See what it works against. Um, so then at the top, this will tell you the kind of a like the class of the battle pet, so this one's a humanoid. So, excuse me. So for this, the humanoid, the passive is they recover 4% of their maximum health if they dealt damage in the round. And then for the damage taken, they uh, have a 50% increase against undead abilities, but they're 33% weaker against critters. And you'll find that all of the pets have something like this, a class they're stronger against and that they're weaker against. Most they're indifferent on, um, or just neutral. Okay, then the other stuff in the interface, here we have the Revive Battle Pets. It has an 8 minute cooldown and it heals and resurrects all of your battle pets to 100% health. So all of them. Um, there's other things you can do to revive them, like band-aids and cookies and stuff. I have some of those in my bank. I should get them out. Um, okay, then on the bottom, the oh for this, the summon button. That's what you hit if you want to summon it, because the battle pets. So there's the three that you can fight with as battle pets, but you can also have one with you because before they were battle pets, they were companion pets. And so you would have it follow you around like, you know, a little dog or something. And there actually are quite a few little dogs, including a perky pug, which they, for a lot of holidays, will make outfits for. It's pretty fantastic. You can get little Valentine's Day dresses for your pug and holiday gear. It's all exciting. So, that's why you can summon them, but you can only have one with you. But when they're summoned, the fun thing about that that's when you can see the stuff they do because they all have animations. So now we're looking at Mercablu, the little guy from BlizzCon. And so he is coming up and yelling at me. He just did that roar and then he has like a fire breathing thing. And if you watch them for like a minute or so, they usually will do all of uh, their animations. But yeah, they're fun. Um, so that's his roar. Uh -huh. And now he's dancing. Okay. So and then you can dismiss them or pull another one. Um, like here's another spawn. Spawn of another spawn. We have Muck Breath. Uh, no alligator I got. Molten Corgi. Oh, let's get the Molten Corgi. Okay. So this was the pet that we got for uh, the 10th anniversary of WoW. The little fire dog. It's very cute. Okay. So the last thing for the pet battle UI is find battle. And this is if you're searching for a pet battle against another player. So who you battle against, there's a few different ways to do this in game. The find battle is with another uh, 
player, and that's the easiest if you have fully leveled teams of 20, like level 25 battle pets, because that's what most people that do this have, they level them and play them. Um, if you want to do it in the environment, you can, what you do is you look on the map. So here, on the mini map on the left, up here, um, you see these little green paw prints? What those are, are pets that I can battle. So the reason it's like that in game, they're creatures like critters, which are just part of the non-player, like the NPCs, um, like this here, this adder, it's a level one critter with one health, so I'm gonna kill it with like 20,000 or something. 197,000, so that was just a little bit of overkill there. But, so I couldn't battle pet that, like fight it with my pets or whatever. Now, and the way you can tell, I see now in game, I'm approaching the one on the map and they have the paw over their head. So that's how I can tell this is a pet that I can battle. So I'm gonna right click it. All right, so now there's only one. When the higher levels, there's three and it shows up how it is on mine. So when you're actually fighting them, there's your first pet and this, the arrow, that's for the higher speed stat, so Tarek Gosa gets to go first. That's how much health they have. So they're level 5, they have 405 health, and they're a dragonkin. Um, and then I also have my Clockwork Gnome, uh, 331 health, level 4, uh, mechanical. Um, and I have the Hydroling, which is awesome, 318 health, level 4. Uh, and this one is actually good against the snake, so... What I'm gonna do, so that's how you can see the pets I have, and this is the pet that I'm fighting. It's a level four adder. It's white, so average quality, um, 230 health. So then, down here are, are my spells abilities for the battle pet, and those are the three that are on the action bar. So now this is to switch pets. So what I'm going to do, and these are the three pets, here's little Terragosa, here's the Clockwork Gnome, and here's the Hydroling. And it'll tell you when you hover over it if one, um, if it has an advantage against what you're fighting. So we'll click the Hydroling. And let's zoom in and look at how cute this Hydroling is. It's very cute. Okay. So that's hiding. So I'm going to bring Lightning, which lasts for five rounds. So you look up here weather, five round lightning storm. So all pets deal six bonus mechanical damage each time they attack and mechanical abilities deal 25% additional damage. So now I am going to bring back my clockwork gnome because he's mechanical and I'm going to punch the crap out of the snake because I haven't actually really attacked yet. Okay, so now it hit me. All right. And now I just punched it for half of its health. So let's punch it again. Will it kill it? Yes. Yes, it did. I punched it twice and it died. So that's one way to get your battle pets to work with each other. And so since I won, the ones that get experience are the ones that fought in the round. And now that I'm done fighting, the battle pets went away. And what you see is the little corgi, which is an elemental battle pet. That's the one that's my companion pet right now. And then this is my imp because my character is a warlock and I have minions. I don't have a lot of minions. I can go through those. That's the imp uh, here. Zoom in. He's little and follows me around. He shoots fireballs at things. When the vocals are on or the audio, he cusses a lot about having to work. Okay, and then here's the Void Lord. This one is like a tank. It's good for attacking things and like keeping them off of me because I'm ranged. So I have this go attack things and like be my bodyguard while I attack them from a distance. So this is the Void Lord. Kind of neat looking. One of my pets is a little, a little tiny Void Lord. Very cute. That one I will also level. Then there's the Observer. Whoa. 
which that's the observer and he has a whole bunch of eyes teeth mm, yeah so that's what he does he also steals spells they're kind of useful useful for pvp can be now here is the this used to be the succubus but they gave him names so it's shavara but it's the succubus so this is for pvp and some of the stuff the succubus does can be invisible um blade dance flesh, yeah. mesmerize so it disorients people so, yeah that's the succubus then the other two i have because of my uh, the talents i picked this is the abyssal and this is good if i'm fighting like a lot of things you see he is my big flamey stone bodyguard fantastic this is my terror guard he's also really big he has wings and horns hooves spiky shoulder pads and he also stops people from casting and stuff pretty good I'm gonna dismiss him though because he's really big and then it's hard to see the pets okay so let's do some more battle pet leveling because I want to get them to level five and then we're gonna go to a different zone okay let's get this battle pet I'm gonna go to the hydroling because it's a snake and I'm gonna call lightning because I can also call lightning even if the adder is underground it's okay because it's multi rounds now I'm gonna go back to the gnome and punch the crap out of the snake because I have the buff but I'm gonna build a turret I did not build a turret before so this is his special ability one of them just went in a big circle and look at that turret so he's getting the snake so that's fun and that's for four rounds and three rounds so now I have two multi-round things on the snake they should probably be dead now I'm kind of and they are good fantastic and now they both got some XP my gnome is level 5 okay I'm gonna heal them oh they're all level 5 okay so now um, so the way you know how to level your pet I'm gonna go to the big map the world map and this is the zone that I'm in northern barrens and it'll tell you okay so then I'm gonna go farther out this is the continent I'm on Kalimdor and if you hover over each zone it will tell you the name of the zone the level for if you're leveling a character and then the pet level like three to six so right now my pets are all level five so there's three to four this zone is five to seven four to six I'm gonna go in this one seven to nine one to two nine to ten okay they make this so it kind of goes with the areas when you're leveling but I'm gonna go to this zone because the pets are level five to seven so I should get some good experience 